Are we filming? Yes, we are. Okay, so... Um, I can't remember what's in here, because I've, I've got a couple, so I don't know which one it is, but we'll take, we'll take, uh, pot, pot luck, as we say in the UK. Um, let's have a look. Uh, initially, I'm not very impressed with the packaging, because I can, uh, I can actually feel the rings of a binder through the, uh, through the, the, uh, packaging, which means that, uh, there's uh, there's a risk of damage. I really do hope that there isn't any damage because this I've been looking forward to. I've been looking forward to uh, discovering this, and discovery is potentially the name of the game. So as usual, I'm just checking to see whether there's any delivery notes, but I don't think there is. So here we go. So let's discard that. Anything on the other side? No. Um, I'm guessing you, uh, you're you thinking, now this is an old one. What on earth is it? And you'd be right. This is seriously old. Seriously old with a capital S. Or should that be O? First of all, is this leather? Well, I don't think it's leather. It looks like a kind of um, uh, leather cloth material. Um, so it's a, it's a fairly rudimentary binder, and and there is a there is a clue in the the rudimentary ness uh, because there is a logo on the cover. A E L looks pretty old, doesn't it? A E L stands for Associated, not A E L, A E I, Associated Electrical Industries. Now, who are they? Well, this will be of interest of anyone who is uh, um, remotely interested in the, the history of engineering, both here in the UK and also America. So um, you viewers in uh, uh, on the other side of the pond, take note. AEI, it was a, it was a group, an amalgamation of lots of different companies, Associated Electrical Industries. And they started in 1928. And it kind of wrapped up and, and, and was sold bit, sold off piece by piece, as it were, as, as inevitably with this, this sort of thing, in 1968. So this binder is at least dating from the 60s and could be considerably older than that. Rather than talk about AEI, I will... I'll leave a link in the description so that you can do your own research. But it is a fascinating, an absolutely fascinating history um, that encompasses a lot of British industry before the Second World War and beyond. Um, and I, I'm so tempted to talk about it, but, but I, want to, I just want to focus on this binder. So... It's well used, as you can see. It's not been tucked away in a drawer. This has definitely, definitely been used in anger. In a commercial, rough-and-tumble world. Obviously, it's been used as a, as a reference binder because it has a series of dividers. Such. Although one of them's missing, uh, the M and the N. Who knows what happened there? But let's have a look at this. Isn't that fantastic? The first thing that springs to mind is the flattability. Now, the engineer that had this, and I'm assuming it is an engineer, possibly a possibly a, a sales engineer, but um, in the same way that 
the Lefax Company started back in 1910 with a view to decanting from a larger stash of data sheets that could be inserted for the engineer into a binder that he could keep in his the top pocket of his jacket or overalls. Um, this is going to be a similar thing, isn't it? Associated electrical industries. We're talking serious, serious, hardcore engineering in the early part of the 20th century. So, it's a mystery. Who knows who owned this? But certainly the flattability, which would have appealed and have, would have been essential for someone working and owning this. I suspect that they were given out and then taken back in. They probably had them on long-term loan because it was it was the the equivalent, I suppose, of handing out a uh, a laptop to uh, engineers today. But here we do have a dashboard, which is uh, I'm not sure what it's made of, but uh, some sort of impregnated cardboard seems to have lasted quite well. Um, interestingly, it has. Let me, let me take this out, and I obviously haven't... This is the first time I've opened these rings, and they open very nicely. I'm very pleased about that. Um, but these are obviously... These are very, very definitely elongated, which is a, a design that we all are familiar with because it helps with stopping the... Uh, stopping the, the the inserts from wrapping themselves impossibly around the rings as we close it. Let's have a look at one of these dividers. Heavy use. For some reason they've um, there's been some uh, extra holes here. Don't really understand why, but but there we go. Um do, will they fit there? No, they won't fit there. So that's interesting. It's interesting that they, they have punched holes asymmetrically at the bottom like that. Not sure why, but there we go. It may have been, I was going to say it may have been an idle, an idle engineer having a cup of tea in the canteen and, and, and borrowing a, a hole punch from the, uh, from the uh, secretary, whatever. But you can see that there might well have been a purpose here because as we can see these these hole punches carry on they carry on down here let's have a look at this there's obviously some maths here and then we have a single page um this is interesting because it's curved it's chamfered rounded if you like all the way rounds quite a nice design and i'm just going through them just uh, just to see what else we have here because when i buy a binder i like to i'm always more interested in a binder if it has inserts who knows who knows how old these dividers and the paper. Oh, it's a shame that this, uh, that M and the M have disappeared. They've 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 been torn off accidentally, presumably. Uh, that is a shame. Uh, but these, what I like about these, is they are ambidextrous. And what I mean by ambidextrous is, if uh, I, I talked about this in an earlier video recently, how. Um, the Farlefax brand, maybe others too, don't appreciate that uh, left-handers have a binder like this, right-handers have a binder like this, and so there's no easy way of writing these, write whatever denotes the dividers, in an ambidextrous form. If, if you're a left-hander and they're written to the right, then effectively they're upside down, etc. And I, I banged on about that in earnest. Uh, whereas here, they've got it right. 
they're just vertic they're written vertically so there is no ambiguity no frustration these are all these dividers have all been divided i mean we'll, i guess we'll never know i mean potentially this has been done 60 or 70 years ago maybe maybe a little bit less maybe a little bit more so we, we're going through them and i don't need to go through every single one but there, there's um there's certainly a full set of dividers and some note paper and then we come to the last one what's going on and, th and there's some there's some paper here um so maybe the paper is contemporary with the dividers and contemporary with the binder and finally we get another of these binders They're these uh, dashboards but this is interesting so we've got a label here and it says something or other there's a it says something about a number it says book is not transferable if something his appointment with he or she in a case of loss then please return at once too so basically this is a bit like the old i mean you can't do it now because of the the rules relating relating to uh data um data retention and, and acquisition but with with uh, Filofax, up until a few years ago, there was a there was a card in here and said, uh, "If this is found, please return it to Filofax," and then Filofax would have a database. Now here, <clears throat> we have an address. It says, Publi something publicity department, Electrical Co. Trafford P." Now Trafford P stands for Trafford Park. I'll leave a I'll leave another link to Trafford Park because the the, the history of Trafford Park uh, is uh, which is now the largest industrial estate in Europe, and it had its origins in the late Victorian era, is absolutely fascinating, um, and uh, it, its its boundary reflects. The, the the size and shape of what was a deer park going back centuries. Um, so this is Trafford. So this has come from Trafford Park, which is or was the home of AEI Electric uh, Associated Electrical Industries. Um, so we've got a. To, uh, if found, please return. I wonder whether there was a. Um, I wonder whether there was a uh, a reward. For, for safe return, probably. Again, we have the slots to aid the smooth operation of the binder. Let me just take these off just for a moment. And uh, I'm snapping these rings. Now, oh, let's take the, the dashboard out. Um, there's a little bit of misalignment, but nothing to worry about. And they open and shut very, very cleanly. Uh, again, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a well-used binder, but I'll tell you what, the quality, even though, even though this was probably like, um, made under contract, um well well it, it it was i mean it was actually and i'll i'll reveal who uh who made this in a second um but the quality is superb uh, even though it's it's leather cloth uh you look at these corners you look at these corners how well they've been done and you compare these corners to some cheaper modern binders and you think why can't they if they could get this right 70 or 80 years ago how come the the art of doing a decent corner is somehow lost i don't i i, I fail to understand why why that is the case but these are superb absolutely superb and the the mounting there's there's quite a lot of corrosion here but nevertheless i mean this this with care could be you it's a usable working tool 
I might even use it myself. A working tool, absolutely fantastic, perfect flattability. The rings seem to be working well. It certainly will um, be something that could be used. I'm not sure whether it's going to go into my collection or whether or not I'm actually going to start using it, but I do like it. I really, really do like it in its form factor and its design and its appearance um, and the general aesthetics of um, basically what is something that uh, uh, probably, well, it's, it's obviously going to date from between 20, 1928 and 1968, but who knows, could this be, could this date from the, uh, the 30s, for instance? I mean, there's definitely a possibility. Um, I'll have to do a bit of research on the AEI trademark to find out when they, uh, when when that uh, was um, changed. Um, that would be a, a good thing to do with the uh, with the aging with the with the determination of the age of this binder. But as it stands, I think that's a very very good acquisition. I absolutely love it. Um, just to compare with a, this is a, this is a traditional Lafax from probably the, the 50s or the 60s, maybe earlier, who knows. Um, this one's a little bit bigger, uh, sorry, a little bit smaller. Um, let me just, let me just compare it with, with a vintage Filofax. So, again, a little bit smaller. And this is what I like about this. I'm really liking this because if you look at the pages in a standard file, these are, this is a, although these are modern, they're the standard size. Look at this. Look at this. And this, there may be a, there may be a clue here, because I'm just going to, I'm just going to, just change one of these just to see. Ah, there is, there is the riddle solved. You see, what's what's happened is the spacings are um, are in alignment and match the Lafax and the um, Filofax. But they don't follow the same. They don't follow the same um, spacings as, uh, as uh, you know, in terms of the sets of three. And so, what's happened is, at some point, these dividers have come out of these dividers. I suspect are Filofax dividers, and they've come out of a Filofax, and they've been rudely or roughly punched so that the they could fit in here more or less the same and these haven't even been punched with a hole punch they've been punched with a you know whatever a pen or something um so that that solves the riddle here that solves the riddle here so what is this and this is a this is obviously um, an unusual, an unusual binder. A little bit smaller than a Filofax. So I'll tell you what it is. It's made by Twinlock. Now Twinlock, the origins of Twinlock uh, go back to. Um, Go back to uh, 1905, <clears throat> and it's it was a very very similar situation uh, compared to uh, the Filofax brands that, that which which was originally uh, I mean it, the the Filofax brand dates from 1921, but the the binders themselves the design of the binders of a Lafax binder date from 1910. But Twinlock, uh, there, was a, there was a guy, a British guy, who was originally going around um, 
He was making loose leaf inserts, duplex and triplex forms, accountancy forms, which he sent, which he, which he, um, uh, tried to sell or, or presumably successfully sold to, um, uh, ironmongers around the UK. So he's a, a bit of a traveling, traveling salesman, as it were. Um, and then he was approached by an American guy, uh, with a, um, who owns the Twinlock brand. And as a result of that, I think he spent a hundred quid initially on his initial stock. Um, and then he uh, he did well, and then and then and then uh, it built up and built up and built up uh, into the well. We don't we don't see the original company anymore because that were, that became defunct in uh, it it was it was struck off the uh, the Gazette in twenty twenty, and I believe it stopped sort of making stuff in 1993 as I understand it unless you unless you know more than I do um but we all know about Twinlock uh they make these um metal cases for documents uh, and um all sorts of uh machines that aid um the acquisition and storage and organisation of financial records um, and uh, did very well it expanded and expanded and expanded uh, but then it sort of uh, died a death as it were in in the 90s um, similar, similarly to uh, Filofax and presumably other brands who were making Filofaxes themselves but um, I'll, anyway, I'll I'll leave uh, I'll leave some information about Twinlock in the description, um, but it is it is interesting. I do find this interesting because it is uh, it's of an indeterminate age, but it is possible it is possible that this dates from. Uh, it could be a very very early one. It could be. Uh, used by probably an engineer or a sales engineer going round and uh, um, receiving data sheets decanted from a central store, maybe up at Trafford Park, which is near Manchester, by the way. Um, but uh, but um, we we obviously I I don't know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna research the logo. If any of you know and can more accurately date this binder uh, by uh, by reference to the the logo then um, then I'd really appreciate uh, hearing from you uh, leave a note in the leave a comment in the in the uh, in the description below <clears throat> I'd appreciate that but overall and I know I've been banging on about this for over 20 minutes but it's a it's a fantastic acquisition. I really really like it. I'm not sure yet whether it's going to be just a collector's piece or whether I'm actually going to actually use it. I quite like the idea of using it, but obviously the um, the the ring the, the 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 differences between these rings and Filofax rings would present a, a bit of a difficulty. Um, so I'm not quite sure whether that might be uh, 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 put a downer on the project. I don't know yet. Um, be interesting. It depends on whether I can get a hole punch or devise a hole punch. I mean, I could, I could, I could cut the, um, I could do the punch the top three and then the bottom three quite easily just by putting two reference marks on my hole punch. So that's not a. I'm um, Talking on the hoof now, thinking on the hoof, but I, but it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a problem. And I do like, I do like the fact that it is it is smaller. Um, let's just actually before I finish and wrap up, let's just take a standard Filofax sheet. And um, this is the this is the difficulty when you've got an overstuffed. Filofax that's being used for storage. Am I going to take a risk? Mm, yeah, that's okay. Um, but let's just have a look and see how that measures up. Well, it doesn't measure up very well. 
uh, but it's within it's within the sort of working tolerances that I uh, I use because quite often I have binders that are that where the the paper is slightly bigger than the um, but taller than the, the actual binder itself. So to me that would be perfect, absolutely perfect. So we will see. We will see what I do, and and I'm going to keep you informed. I'll let you know in due course what I'm going to do with this. It might become part of a uh, uh, part of another review, um, and if I find out if I can date this more accurately, then I will do so. So, a twin lock binder dating from between. 1928 and 1968, stamped with Associated Electrical Industries, and uh, and a very, very nice thing. Thank you very much for watching. Until my next video, goodbye.